The Nigerian economy consists of diverse sectors working in tandem to drive economic prosperity, and one of such sectors is the Nigeria automotive sector. Hello and welcome to Business Daily on Trust TV, where we'll bring you updated facts and analysis on the Nigerian economy and major developments in the streets of business. I am Christiana Amodu Otinya. Thank you for joining in. A good number of Nigerians make use of automobiles and vehicles because for many this has become a necessity and not a luxury but how much value can this industry add to the nation's economic productivity from the stages of manufacturing and down to job creation my guest on the program today is jelani aliu the director general national automotive design and development council the nadc he will be taking us through how nigeria can harness the potentials inherent in the automotive industry now so much to be said especially how we can tap into to the huge potential base of this industry. He will be speaking also to the development of electric car. A lot of us have seen the sensation of the electric car, especially across social media platforms. But how much do you know about this? And also, challenges have been mentioned as how this will impact general economy vis-a-vis -vis the challenges in the power sector. I'll take a short break now, and when we come back, you'll be hearing from my guest. Please stay. Welcome back and thank you for still staying there with us on the program. Now let's do a little bit of fact checking, especially on the automotive sector, before we bring in the Director General to speak to some of the issues that have come up, especially with the sector. Now Nigeria has a total of 11.8 million vehicles in the country, 39% as 4.6 million were privately owned, 56% 6.7 million commercial vehicles, 1.1% government vehicles and 0.4% owned by diplomats. Now the Atati One Live Licensed producers of cars, trucks, and buses currently operating in Nigeria with a combined installed capacity of 205,000 vehicles annually. Nigeria's goal is that by the year 2025, 30% of passenger cars driven in the country will be electric powered. Nigeria's new finance bill plans to also reduce import duties on imported vehicles from 35% to 5%. percent Now, these are some of the facts that we have seen come up in that sector. Now let's just hit the ground running and go straight into the conversation for today. Welcome to the program, the Director General of the National Automotive Design and Development Council, Jelani mm -hmm. Aliyu. It's good to have you on the program today. Thank you. Now I want you to speak to the sector generally. How is the automotive industry faring? Let's begin from there. It is doing very good. Uh, let's take a look at where we were. Uh, we all remember the 70s and 80s. And we had companies like Peugeot, Volkswagen, and Namco, Stair, uh, producing vehicles in Nigeria. Uh, things were really looking up. Uh, then around about 1986, the price of crude oil that the country was so dependent on uh, dropped from about $26 to below $10 a barrel. Overnight, the country went into a recession. Uh, Nigerians could no longer buy those brand new Peugeots and Volkswagens. So those companies were forced to stop operations, and a lot of them left. Uh, the federal government said uh, that wouldn't be allowed to happen. And the NAIDP was introduced uh, to bring back uh, automotive production. So from the numbers that we had in the early 70s and 80s, we basically, because of the recession, went down to zero. The NAIDP brought it back up. And uh, as we speak, we have investment of over 1 billion US dollars. That's over 500 billion Naira invested in the Nigerian automotive uh, industry. We have companies uh, in Lagos, uh, in Newi, a number state, uh, Ogun, uh, Kano, Kaduna, Aqua Ibom, and others are coming up, actively assembling and producing vehicles in Nigeria. Mm. These companies have a combined production capacity of over 400,000 vehicles per year. Yes, they are not producing 400,000 because of general economic challenges, uh, but we're working one by one, looking at these issues and bringing solutions to them. So. The national automotive industry, we believe, has delivered. 
It has invested this huge amount of money. It has set up these uh, uh, large number of assembly plants across the country, and it is able to produce a large number of vehicles. What we need to do as a nation, uh, uh, all entities, is to work together and unlock that market demand so that these companies can produce at the capacities that they have installed. All right, thank you for giving us that background, especially to the discussion. Now, um, when I was doing a little bit of fact-checking and research now, um, what I saw was there are 31 licensed producers of cars, trucks, buses currently operating in Nigeria. Can you tell us the, categorically tell us the number of assemblers and producers we have in the country? Yes, well, we do have quite a number of, assembl uh, of assemblers, quite a number of assemblers in the country that I mentioned earlier, actively producing vehicles. Uh, automotive production is a joint uh, international effort where you have components coming from many very different companies and countries coming together and the end OEM puts those uh, vehicles together. For example, when you talk of the proverbial American vehicle, the uh, Chevrolet, mm. uh, Chevrolet has parts coming, many parts coming from outside the United States. They come together. Uh, as specced by General Motors, and they're put together to become Chevrolets. Yeah. That is what we're actively working towards. It's not really about how many assemblers we have or how many assemblers are operating in Nigeria, but what is that capability? How does the Nigerian automotive sector really plug into the global automotive value chain? So that we're not only producing vehicles for Nigeria, we're producing vehicles for Africa, especially now with the opportunities of the AFCFTA. And we're also producing components that would go into assembling vehicles in US, mm. in Europe. So our ob objective now is to really work with both uh, uh, local and international stakeholders to really be able to produce components that would feed Nigeria, both uh, new vehicles, aftermarket, feed Africa through AFCFTA, and very possibly also feed Europe and other parts of the world through the uh, provision of uh, components. Okay, I like the fact that you talk, you're, you're speaking about how we can further broaden the market and also mm -hmm. add capacity to those that produce in Nigeria, as the case may be. Are there plans in place, or what plans have your council put in mm -hmm. place in terms of building local capacity of manufacturers, car manufacturers, assemblers in Nigeria? Yes, well, you build capacity and then you also make sure that what you are about to produce or manufacture meets minimum international global standards. So in terms of building the capacity, we're mm -hmm. working on building three automotive industrial parks, okay. uh, Kaduna, uh, uh, Ede, and uh, Inewi. So these will be centralized locations with all the necessary infrastructure needed for companies to plug in, uh, come in, plug in, and play. Mm -hmm. So when they do produce those components, how do we ensure that they meet minimum global standards? Yes. And that is why we have built three automotive testing facilities in, uh, in Lagos, uh, Enugu, and uh, Zaria. So when these are up and running, uh, hopefully towards the end of this year, okay. because as we speak, we have uh, uh, the civil works complete. We're now in the, in the process of installing the equipment that is coming in from overseas. Oh, good. As soon as these are up and running, any component or vehicle to be sold in Nigeria or to be exported out of Nigeria to other markets will have to be tested and certified by NADDC before it is uh, allowed uh, to, to proceed. Okay, I also want, to, want you to speak to, for me, the electric car is actually mm. the big elephant in the room when we're talking mm. about the automotive sector because I, I remember having a conversation with mm. a group of people and we, we saw the electric video, the video of the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, mm. taking a drive of the electric car mm. and a lot of people raised concerns that we are a country that we are still battling issues mm. in the power sector talking about blackout day in, day out. We have unions going on strike on different occasions. Now, I want you to explain, because we have diverse viewers watching you now, explain to us how this would work. Having electric car working in Nigeria, and also on the other hand, having power challenges in the country. Mm. Electric vehicles, e-mobility in general, I believe is, is excellent for Nigeria, is excellent for Africa, for many reasons. Uh, number one, these vehicles are really very dynamic. 
they're really actually, yes, they are advanced technology, mm -hmm. but they're actually simpler technology. Uh, an electric motor, an electric vehicle has far less parts than a fossil fuel powered vehicle. So you spend less money, less resources, less time trying to maintain them. They need very, very little maintenance. Electric vehicles can easily be powered by renewable energy, which we have tons of mm -hmm. sunlight. You can easily channel solar energy to electrical energy and charge these electric vehicles. Then philosophically, if we talk about power challenges, right? And Nigerians love cars. Nigerians at all levels love cars, uh, personal cars. And then there's also this need to, 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 to offer commercial transportation. So when you put this together, I believe it will probably drive us mm. to really find solution to power. If we know that we have to have electricity to move, to drive the cars that we love and use every day, I believe we'll be in a position to come together and find those solutions, which are beginning to happen in terms of uh, uh, mini grids, electric mini grids. Let me tell you a, a, a very interesting story. We have both local and international uh, uh, partners working to create off-grid solutions to electricity, uh, putting up mini grids across the nation, even in remote areas. Now, they are beginning to be faced by a problem, that they are beginning to produce too much energy with those mini grids. So what do they do with, with that energy in remote area? Electric vehicles. So actually, we are beginning to have a good problem, a good challenge. People hear about the grid, but we also need to know there's a lot of work going on on mini grids, which would allow us to power electric vehicles. And uh, politically, uh, which is actually even also good for us, uh, in 2015, Nigeria signed uh, the uh, Paris Accord, was one of the yes. uh, signatories of the Paris Accord on the mitigation of greenhouse gases, that saying that we have to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide being released by factories and transportation solutions. Electric vehicles will allow us to reach those targets mm. much, much faster. So when you put all these things together, electric vehicles are good for Nigeria, and uh, we do have the energy to power them. We just have to think alternatively, look at uh, renewable energy, and I believe uh, uh, we, we can really do it. Now, the deadline for the EV, the EV concept is 2025. Now, is that still feasible, given current realities? We are in the year 2022, and we expect that by 2025, 30% of passenger cars are supposed to be like electric powered. Is that still feasible? What is happening is uh, the growth is, ex is exponential. Okay. We started not too long ago with, with nothing. And uh, we all know of the Hyundai Kona that is being uh, assembled in Nigeria. Uh, and right after that, we have uh, Jet Moto's uh, uh, a local, another indigenous company also providing the Jet Systems Mover. It's a 100% delivery van. And uh, we have uh, Max E, is a motorcycle manufacturer out of Lagos, beginning to offer uh, electric motorcycles. We have Phoenix Automobiles uh, that was just registered by NADDC not too long ago. Uh, they had earlier done a project where they converted a mini bus from petrol to ele electric. Uh, they now have been licensed and we're going to be working very closely with them to be able to provide uh, electric vehicles in the country. And we have had many discussions with a number of different stakeholders, private sector, that are interested in either producing more electric vehicles or uh, 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 providing a commercial uh, electric e-mobility commercial uh, solutions. So the momentum is growing, mm. and as we speak, we're about to really wrap up the draft of the Nigerian Electric Vehicle Development Plan. Okay. This would be a set of regulations and incentives to promote uh, the production and usage of uh, electric vehicles. We believe this would go a long way in spurring and really expediting that transition from a fossil fuel to uh, e-mobility. Talking about the electric, electric, um, electric vehicle development plan, are we going to see that come into force before the end of the year 2022? 
Yes, that is objective. Okay, yes. okay. Uh, I think we'll take a short break now. Mm -hmm. We'll take a short break here. And when we return, the conversation will continue. Don't forget, you can catch up on this conversation on our social media platforms. You don't get to miss out on the information as the break. Trust, trust TV across all social media platforms. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back and thank you for still staying there with us on the program. If you're just joining in, this is Business Daily on Trust TV. We have with us here in the studio the Director General of the National Automotive Design and Development Council, Jelani Ali, and he has been speaking to numerous developments in the sector just before we went on that break. Now, DG, let me come back to you, mm -hmm. especially with this issue of electric vehicle. I really want you to demystify it because mm -hmm. for some people it looks like something that is Herculean, but I want you to demystify the mm -hmm. process. Tell us about the EV stations that will be powering these vehicles mm. across the country because a lot of Nigerians are very skeptical about the whole powering of the process because, of course, there are still <laughs> issues around the electricity sector. Please clarify for us. Yes, let's, let's do a quick analogy. Uh, when you talk about problems with power, yet you have probably millions of air conditioners and refrigerators actively being used in the country. Electric vehicles can be charged from sockets that can easily power any air conditioner. So any home in Nigeria can power an electric vehicle. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we, yes, acknowledge there is that problem of mm -hmm. continuous power from the grid. Mm -hmm. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, we looked at renewable energy. And to prove that that is doable, uh, we, we designed, uh, we strategized, designed, and built three uh, solar powered, 100% solar powered electric vehicle charging stations at three locations. Uh, we built one in Sokoto, uh, the second one uh, Lagos, and then the third one in, in Suka. And we chose to put them up in universities that have energy research centers, uh, not just to prove the concept works, but to bring on, uh, bring to the doorsteps of young Nigerians at these schools uh, this advanced technology let them touch it, feel it, kick it, know that it exists, and have them go into it and come up with even better solutions. S sort of getting that technology transfer going. Yes. So electric vehicles are very viable in Nigeria, very feasible, because we can use solar energy and other renewable energy sources, especially mini grids, to power them. And uh, as we speak, we're also building a, a fourth one here in Abuja. Okay. This one will also have a supercharger that can charge these vehicles much, much quicker. So we have a blueprint that any uh, a private sector entity can come work with us and replicate these across uh, the country. 
at strategic uh, locations. Okay, okay, that's great. Now, I want you to speak to issues around bilateral relations to develop the sector because it is said that for, for, that, for most sectors to grow, it, there is need to have mm -hmm. relations with other countries where we have also seen some of this concept work. I know you were recently in Japan. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what we, what we should expect in terms of bilateral relations to mm -hmm. develop the automotive sector. Yes, well, when you drive along in Nigeria, uh, a majority of the vehicles you see are Japanese. Uh, so we thought it uh, very important that we really uh, engage these OEMs even further. Uh, now, some of them are already in the country. Uh, Toyota uh, partners with Elizade here. Uh, Honda West Africa is here as an OEM uh, itself, Honda. Uh, you have uh, Mitsubishi with CFAO, uh, uh, Suzuki uh, with Bulus, um, and then uh, Yamaha also with CFAO. Uh, so some of these Japanese companies already have presence in Nigeria. But what we want them to do is to really increase exponentially that investment so that they are able to produce even uh, uh, more vehicles in Nigeria. And then beyond vehicles also, uh, we want them to go into component production. Like I mentioned, we should look at ourselves not as a closed uh, market, uh, but to plug into the global uh, uh, marketing distribution of uh, and, 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 and manufacturing uh, chain. So we had very uh, fruitful discussions with them, uh, which we are following up. Uh, since they already have investment in Nigeria, mm -hmm. increasing that investment, we feel, wouldn't be uh, too difficult for them. And uh, we also brought to their uh, attention this opportunity with AFCFTA, Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, which would allow them, if they set up stronger bases in Nigeria, to feed not just the Nigerian market, but the African market. And then if they do produce components in Nigeria, those components can go back to uh, other parts of the world where they assemble their vehicles. Okay, as we prepare to wrap up the program, I want you to speak to how what, what's, what is your council doing in terms mm -hmm. of getting more Nigerians interested in patronizing mm -hmm. the made in Nigeria vehicles? Because then mm -hmm. again, you listed a lot of people, a lot of companies. I don't want to call their names because they are not going to, <laughs> if we send invoice to them, they are not going to send the money for adverts. But you mm -hmm. listed a lot of companies. But how can we, what, what, what can we do to boost capacity of some of the local producers that we have in the country and also have more Nigerians interested? in getting made in Nigeria vehicles. Because to be honest with you, I've heard a lot of Nigeria say that some of these made in Nigeria vehicles are even mm. more expensive. There are quite a number of things. Uh, to begin with, uh, to support the manufacturers, uh, we've uh, entered discussions with CBN okay. to see how special funding uh, at very low, low rates could be given to these uh, companies that produce in, in the country. And then also, on the demand side, uh, offer uh, loans to vehicle financing for people to buy these vehicles so that uh, you create the, the demand okay. and then you pump up the, the, the supply. Um, these vehicles that are assembled or produced in Nigeria are of the same standards as vehicles produced anywhere in the world. Because these companies operating in Nigeria do it at a caliber that meets international standards. So, and another thing to consider also, or to really uh, take uh, uh, cognizance of, is that when you bring in a fully built vehicle that was meant for France or meant for Germany, you're bringing a vehicle that was sort of developed for other climes. The roads are different, the temperatures are different, the climatic conditions are different. But these vehicles that are made in Nigeria uh, are designed, developed, and built to uh, cope with the extreme conditions, extreme heat, extreme dust, extreme usage in, in, in rough conditions. So buying a vehicle that is made here is ultimately more cost effective than bringing in a vehicle that breaks down uh, uh, not long after you start to use it. Okay, thank you so much. We have been speaking with the Director General of the National Automotive Design and Development Council, the NADDC, that's talking about Jelani Aliu. Thank you for coming on the program today. My pleasure.
Thank you. Now, a lot of updates there, especially as it relates to the automotive sector. And like you have heard him say, getting a vehicle produced here in Nigeria is more cost effective than bringing a vehicle from out of the country to probably use in the country. And as we, as we talk so much about patronizing made in Nigeria goods, the vehicle industry should not also not be left out. Don't forget, you can catch up on all the information you need on news updates and also all the information you need in the world of business on all our social media platforms. Just go there and you are not going to miss out from news as they break. Thank you for investing your time with me on the program. My name is Christiana Amodu Otinya. Enjoy the rest of your day.